We're analyzing Simon Property Group Inc, ticker symbol SPG, to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Simon Property Group. There will also be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Simon Property Group for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Simon Property Group's stock performance. business is trading for $103.48 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is down 20.5%. Over the last five years, their stock price is down 31% overall. Over 10 years, their stock price is down 34% overall. However, going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, Simon Property Group is increasing their stock price at about 3% compounded annually. Keep in mind that the company is also a REIT, so they have to pay out 90% of their earnings to shareholders as common dividends. And the business has one of the highest dividend yields of any business in the S&P 500. Right now, Simon Property Group has a 6.67% dividend yield, which is significantly above the yield you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF. And their average dividend yield throughout this 20-year time frame would be in addition to their compounded annual returns. So Simon Property Group is trading in between their 52-week high and their 52-week low. They're a little closer to their 52-week low. They are a large business. They have about a $34 billion market cap. For background about the business, Simon Property Property Group is the second largest real estate investment trust in the United States. Its portfolio includes an interest in 230 properties, 136 of which are traditional malls, 69 premium outlets, 14 mill centers, which are a combination of a traditional mall, outlet center, and big box retailers, six lifestyle centers, and five other retail properties. Simon's portfolio averaged $693 in sales per square foot over the 12 months prior to the pandemic. The company also owns a 21% interest in Claire Pierre, a European retail company with investments in shopping centers in 18 countries, and joint venture interests in 33 premium outlets across 11 countries. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on equity to be above 12%. And this is because the average publicly listed REIT earns about a 6% return on equity. So by looking for a benchmark that's double that, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Simon Property Group blows this metric out of the water. They've earned very, very high returns on equity in all five of these years. And as we'll learn later, that's because the business uses a lot of leverage and the company has a very small amount of equity relative to the overall capital in the business. So averaged out, Simon Property Group is earning about a 59% return on equity. Again, just massively above that benchmark we're looking for. And so this is a check here on metric number one. Next for metric number two, we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and cash from operations growth for Simon Property Group. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these will be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time frame, Simon Property Group's revenues are down 6%, their earnings have declined by 12%, and their cash from operations are just up marginally, meaning that metric number two is an X here for the business. While these declines haven't been major, they are declines nonetheless. Next, for metric number three, we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the company by looking at Simon Property Group on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. As we just learned, the company's earnings have declined over this time frame. However, we still want to look at what the company has done in terms of their shares outstanding. So Simon Property Group has diluted existing shareholders by about 6% over this time frame. So with the decline in earnings plus shareholder dilution, this means that their earnings per share are down over the last five years. And this is an X here on metric number three. Next for metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years. So their free cash flows are up just marginally over this time frame. However, their shareholder dilution is going to be outpacing this, meaning that their cash flows per share are down over the last four years. So this is an X on metric number four. So far, recapping where we stand currently, we only have one check and three Xs for Simon Property Group. Then metric number five here, we're looking at how the business uses debt. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of cash from operations that the business has produced over their last five years. And this is because we don't want to be investing in a overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So Simon Property Group currently has $24.8 billion in net debt 
And over the last five years, the company has only produced about $17.3 billion in cash from operations. The sum of their cash from operations is falling far short of their net debt position here, meaning that this is an X on metric number five. One thing worth mentioning for REITs is that real estate is typically able to be levered at higher rates than some other types of assets. So these higher debt loads may or may not be a potential concern for you. If you want to learn more, you can dig into the company's filings where they'll break this out. Even extrapolating the business's current cash from operations out over the next five years, this would still be falling short of their current net debt position. Then the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average cash from operations to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may potentially offer us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Simon Property Group. Simon Property Group currently has a $59 billion total enterprise value, and we're using this because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, so it'll give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Simon Property Group were a private company. We learned previously that the business produced $17.3 billion in cash from operations over their last five years, meaning that they produce about $3.5 billion in cash from operations in a typical year. When we divide their nearly $3.5 billion of their average cash from operations by their $59 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 5.8% average cash from operations to enterprise value yield for Simon Property Group. So this would be a check here on metric number six, as this is giving us a slight risk premium. In their most recent fiscal year, the business produced about $3.8 billion in cash from operations. So to get a current cash from operations to enterprise value yield for the company, when we divide their $3.8 billion of their last 12 months of cash from operations by their $59 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 6.3% current cash from operations to enterprise value yield for the business. So this looks like this may be potentially attractive on both a current and an average basis for Simon Property Group. Just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy the business. This isn't a buy or sell recommendation of any security and you'll want to stick around as we'll perform a discounted cash flow analysis to come to a more concrete estimate for their intrinsic value but before we get to that let's cover our bonus metric so as our bonus here we're looking at simon property group's dividend profile so again simon property group currently pays out one of the highest dividend yields of any business in the s p 500 they have a dividend yield of 6.67 percent however people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to determine whether or not simon property group is able to support their dividends with their cash flows and that's been the case in four of these past five years 2020 was the only year where the business wasn't able to cover their dividend and payouts using their cash flows. But since then, the company has had a pretty comfortable dividend payout ratio, especially relative to their cash flows. While they have had to cut their dividends overall throughout this time frame, again, they still have one of the highest dividend yields. And it looks like their cash flows are able to support their dividends as the company's back on track to where they were prior to 2020. So while this is only a snapshot of their last five years of performance, it could be the case that Simon Property's dividend is well positioned to be sustainable into the future. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze Simon Property Group, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a business's free cash flows, and it's just like any other model in any other discipline, its outputs will depend on its inputs. Here we're starting with the company's current free cash flows, and we're using historical growth assumptions to project these out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward for the business. If we assume that over the next 10 years, Simon Property Group can grow their free cash flows at a rate of 4% annually, then during the 10 years out after that, their cash flows would be flat. If we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of the company's tangible net worth per share, and we were ideally seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments in addition to his requirements for margin of safety, then it looks like at today's valuations of Simon Property Group that a potential fair intrinsic value for the business is right around $84 per share. This would be about $20 below the company's current stock price, but it would be just above the company's 52-week lows. There are some important factors you'll want to keep in mind here as well. One is that we would not be doubly counting their dividends, so their nearly 7% dividend yield would be included in this 15% rate of return, so their stock price would be increasing by less than 10% annually over this time frame. Also, the business has had a low degree of business predictability, so this could also be the case into the future, so it may be more difficult to accurately estimate this company. And please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice, and it is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professional. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our final rating for Simon Property Group. 
but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business? Starting with some of the key qualitative aspects supporting a potential long thesis of the company, number one, Simon's Mall and Outlet Portfolio contains a high percentage of the best malls in the country where redevelopment capital can be deployed at the most promising yields. Number two, Simon's high quality portfolio will continue to present attractive locations for tenants to place stores, even as retail companies look to reduce store counts and present the most desirable locations for e-tailers looking to establish a physical presence. And number three, Simon's access to capital, scale, and validated record position the firm to execute on any attractive and available investment opportunities. Then for some of the key qualitative points supporting a potential short thesis of the business, number one, given the relative maturity of the U.S. retail market and the size of the company, Simon may be encouraged to seek larger, riskier investments domestically and abroad to move the needle. Number two, retailers are looking to reduce store counts and average store size, so Simon may need to make significant concessions to keep existing tenants and attract new tenants to fill both inline and anchor spaces. And number three, if consumers forced to purchase goods online permanently change their behavior to favor e-commerce and avoid public places, long-term sales growth could suffer. So there you have it for a balanced perspective around some of the qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our final rating of the company. So in analyzing Simon Property Group, ticker symbol SPG, we learn that the business earns extremely high returns on equity given the low amount of equity that's in their business overall and their high reliance on debt. The company has seen their revenues and earnings slightly decline but their cash from operations are marginally up over the last five years, and they have diluted existing shareholders by about 6%. The company doesn't look like they're able to support their net debt positions with either their current or their average cash from operations. However, as a mall owner, there are reasons why their retail assets could be more highly levered in a manner that's relatively safer than, than highly levering up some other types of assets, so this may or may not be a potential concern there. On both an average and a current basis of their cash from operations to their enterprise value, it does look like Simon would potentially be attractive relative to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Then it looks like since 2020, the company has comfortably supported their dividend payouts, even while maintaining this very highly levered position. Performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Simon Property Group, if you believe that those historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward and you are seeking a 15% rate of return from Simon Property Group, then it looks like based on today's valuations of the business, a fair value is around $84 per share. Again, that's down $20 from what the company's current stock price is at, and the company was last at those levels in December of 2020. It's worth reiterating that this type of analysis isn't financial advice, and it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether or not it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Simon Property Group. So with all of our metrics and their discounted cash flow analysis in mind, it looks like Simon Property Group is only a weak candidate in terms of its attractiveness for further research. Don't let that discourage you from digging into the company if you're interested in the business. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Simon Property Group with me, and have a great day.